Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Uh, today, you've got myself, Coach Lizzie, and Coach Dean as your hosts. And our guest today is someone who we, you know, someone a little bit different. Mm. Not a scientist, not a PT, not a coach, but actually a Flex Success client, Sam. So welcome, Sam. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. And we wanted to have you on the show for lots of reasons, but I wanted to know, why do you think we've asked you on the show? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have just hit our one year anniversary, Lizzie and I working together uh, as coach client. So uh, probably a good opportunity to sort of reflect on the last year. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I sort of self-identified just how far I've come from sort of a, a lifetime of yo-yo dieting to where we are now. So probably a good opportunity with you guys starting up the podcast. Yeah. I'm no longer than you, so there. That's true. You were a really <laughs> Dean's friend. But in the event of a breakup, I get to keep Sam. <laughs> we did talk about that, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Dean. Okay, fair That's all right. So for listeners out there, um, Sam has lost an impressive amount of weight. Do you mind me giving your weight? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So before Sam came on board with me, she'd already lost some weight and you came on board at 107 point something kilos and yeah. 20 kilos down from that now, which is incredible. Woo! I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. And you did mention that we've been working together one year and I just quickly did the math uh, when we were yeah. talking before we clicked record and that works out to be an on average 400 grams per week. Now that mm -hmm. doesn't sound very impressive. But I wanted to point out that 400 grams per week, that's the average over the year, right? And that's inclusive of diet breaks where you've gone yep. on weight maintenance phases, um, some, you know, three or four week holidays to Bali and yep. there, where there was a small amount of weight gain that, that we didn't yep. have, by the way, the goal yep. was to go away and allow for a little bit of weight gain. So yeah. The average, including holidays and diet breaks and, you know, some not so perfect weeks and things like that. Yeah. Let's call them normal, that's, that's, <laughs> normal life weeks. Yeah. And that's, and I, that, that was probably one of the biggest things when I was sort of having a think about this last year. I've actually had more annual leave weeks, been to more weddings, events, um, you know, holidays, uh, days are spent overseas in any annual period um, has been bigger this, this last year. So, and I think that that was the whole idea. It wasn't go hard and lose those 20 kilos in six months, which I, I could have said to you, that was my goal. And I'm sure you would have supported me with that. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't the idea at all. Yeah. yeah. Cause you would have had to miss out on all those events and all those. Yeah. Those yeah, events. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah now, absolutely. I, I've just introduced you as a flex client, but you're so much more than that. Mm -hmm. So do you want to humanize yourself for our listeners? What does your yes. life look like? What do you do for a job? What color are you yes. <laughs> um, so I'm, uh, I'm in HR, work for a mining and construction company, been here about 10 years now. Um, and I've got two little boys. So I've got um, Harvey, who is four next month, and Spencer, who is almost 18 months. Um, so I actually started with Flex. Uh, Spence would have been, yeah, I guess a few months old. And we sort of, we got started with sort of dealing with, I'd lost a little bit of the baby weight, um, uh, but then really wanted to get a plan in place, sort of had always sort of thought we'd only have the two kids. So thought that now was as good a time as any, if I was really going to take back control and get my body back once and for all, I guess. Have you thought about your third child slash dependent? That is your husband. No. Uh, yes, he has a <laughs> directly impacted baby body weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and so there's no plans for more. No, there's not. And so I think that was probably a big thing. Actually, uh, in between the two boys, I think that um, mindset wise, I really used that as an excuse to not get the baby weight off after having Harvey, because it was this whole thing in the back of my mind, well, I'm just going to go back there and do it again. It always seemed because of the, the way that I had dieted in the past it was an all or nothing approach, like go hard, you literally don't go out, you'd say no to everything. Yeah. So I wasn't ready to commit to that because I was thinking, well, that's like a once in a lifetime thing i'll do that after the second baby without realizing obviously everything that we've learned in the last year i probably would have done it in between and mm. got yeah. back on track yeah yeah absolutely so um sorry Dean, did i cut you off yeah i was gonna say like um liz and yourself obviously working together now for 12 months and setting up this as the podcast started i haven't actually been actively involved in getting you on mm. so but from an outsider having now known you for i think like what 14 years 
Yeah, yeah. Um, that sounds right. Julie's as a Thule hey. for people on the Gold Coast who know that is know what that is. Um, <laughs> but um, like as an outsider watching your last twelve months, the biggest thing that I think I noticed and the reason why we got you on, I also believe, is because of the fact that it seemed like it's been a nice, stable, sustainable, just far more met like balanced approach from you as well. Because I've obviously seen you go up and down too. Um, yeah, and, you know, and I've seen my other friends too yeah. do the same. And that yeah. other friend that I'm talking about now is still that person that goes up and down because the the method to uh, get the weight back off is still to do it at rapid speed. You know, yeah, yeah. like you said, yeah. just go hard or go home. Yeah. And um, yeah. and yeah, like it's been a, a really awesome uh, time for me, I suppose, to sit back and watch success done right. Mm. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons, Sam, that I wanted to ask you on, by the way, you still haven't answered what color underwear you're wearing. Yeah. So I'm going to... Because I'd actually have to have a look, I think. All right. <laughs> I'm waiting. We've got time. I'm waiting. I really that's, am. That's when you know <laughs> No, no. Just, why no, are you checking? I'm really waiting. That's when you know you've got children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, mine are great. I could, probably t I could probably tell you what the two boys are wearing, but not myself. <laughs> um, now, the reason I wanted to have you on, Sam, is because you are not alone in feeling mm. like you don't have well before you started of course you don't have control of your weight and no matter what you do you can't get the weight off and yeah um, feeling a little bit lost and trying everything and feeling like nothing works for me um and just sort of in this state of emergency almost mm. and yeah a lack of understanding about how weight loss works yeah so over our time together you've obviously learned a lot because coaching is more yeah than and yep. I just love that you made a joke once in one of your check-ins that sure you have a great physical before and after, but if only we had a before and after of like your relationship with food and your brain yeah. and attitude, because that's a more impressive DNA. So yeah. I wanted to talk today about, um, and that process and that process of feeling in control and you know, how that's been for you. So, yep. um, maybe we'll start by asking you why you decided to try something new and something new being coaching mm. yeah good good question um it probably was uh the success of um seeing my sister work with flex and having a bit to do with you guys and obviously having watched your business from the early stages grow into what it has um or had even you know a year ago um caught my eye anyway mm -hmm. yeah. sorry a world domination is, is what we're yes exactly exactly um caught my eye anyway but i mean trying something new in itself is not unique for me i actually um before we were talking wrote down a list of all the diets that i have um tried in the past okay. if you would bear with me for just a moment uh it's jenny craig weight watchers light and easy the hcg drops that you put under oh, your tongue right. damn yeah did them low carb the cayenne pepper lemon water one that was horrendous <laughs> Opti Fast, Fat Blaster, and Tony Ferguson is my little complete list in my in my adult years of um, of trying. So so trying something new as a catch all like this is going to be my magic pill was actually not something um, all that unique for me. Um, the results, the education, the actually having something to stick by and sustainability piece was. So I think that. Um, the idea of trying something new because nothing else had worked, probably something, a habit that I was just going to continue to live out for the rest of my life, looking for this magic pill and this solution. Um, what came from that after the, the weeks, I guess, are of actually then the education transfer and the transfer of knowledge to me as a client and you actually wanting to get me to be sustainable and to be able to do it by myself is something that was really, really unique. Um, the biggest difference, and one of the things that I often think back on is, I remember one of my first meetings um, when I went to join up with Jenny Craig, and I, and they have like your induction forms, and, and you're sitting there and you're filling it all out. And this massive piece on the very first meeting um, is around signing you up as a lifetime member. Oh. And I just remember thinking, that's really odd. And it just stuck with me for a really long time. Like, are they backing me to succeed here or are they saying that I'm going to need them forever? And yeah. it was like a permanent fixture on their sign on. Like basically, if you tell us now, you're obviously a yo-yo dieter. This is obviously something that you struggle with. Sign up now forever and you can come back and forth for the rest of your life and there's never a re-sign on phase. So you can go have your kids and you can come back and then, you know, you'll go on a holiday and then you can come back. But it was just this whole... 
I just remember thinking, wow, you really think that I'm going to be tied to you forever? And at that point, you know, I, I was. And in all likelihood, yeah. um, a lot of people that go down that path probably would be because there isn't that transfer of knowledge. It's not let's get you understanding yeah. the science behind this so you make informed choices. I think that really highlights the difference between a lot of companies or weight loss companies, why, why they yeah. do and we're not a weightless company, but why we do it as well. And clearly our why is different to theirs. Their why is money. Well, no, they yeah. sell weight loss. They sell weight and loss. Literally, yeah. that's what they sell, right? They sell yeah. weight loss. They don't sell anything else. Mm. But they as soon as you them. as soon as you start understanding, or if you get to the point where you actually understand the science and the, you know, calories in versus calories out and all of that, you no not longer need them and you're self-sufficient. And, and so there's not actually nothing in it for them to actually give you that knowledge. It's, yeah. you know, when I think of the, the Weight Watchers using their own point system, well, their points aren't, don't talk about macros and they don't talk about the um, calories. They put it in their own language. So it's not even transferable when you move yeah. away from the actual, their actual paid program. So yeah. you're stuck with them for life. You're on this points program that's actually not doesn't you know you don't go to subway and they have six subway you know weight watches equals six subway points or whatever you know mm. like yeah. their own bitcoin well they have all their own yes. products, like their their frozen meals and their own yeah yeah yeah, yeah you literally yeah. have to exactly. eat the system if you want to maintain the weight loss that they're trying to help you get from what i understand from the list that you've read out and from what i understand about all of those different programs i would have to say that weight watchers if I had to choose one for myself, I probably would choose Weight Watchers because they say like a piece of cake is, of chocolate cake is four points. So you can kind of be a little bit more flexible, but it is still littered with, with some problems. Yeah, they definitely remove the stigma of food types. Yeah. To a certain degree. Yeah. You know, they still push it as being a healthy option and all that kind of jazz. But yeah. um, and, and push their own meals. Like here, you get our meal service so you don't actually learn how to food prep. You just learn how to rely on our products. Mm. So it's still yeah, yeah. 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 So... Did anything surprise you? So when you tried all of those diets, you ended up in the same place. Did anything surprise you with flex? Was there anything that didn't align with your expectations? Um, look, no, I, I can honestly say that my, my, uh, I, I thought that I would lose weight because generally speaking, when I have started any of these things, I have lost weight because I have started it with a mindset of, I have reached rock bottom. I'm the heaviest that I've been in X days or X years. Um, I need to do something about this. I'm going to go hard or fast and I just commit everything to it. Um, and, and with that would normally come, you know, I'm not going to drink at my sister's wedding or whatever this next event is that's coming up, you know, and, and dedicate everything to it. But I think what probably surprised me was the flexibility around it in terms of our conversations about, well, you know, life still needs to go on. So what do you have um, in the next few months? Actually understanding, uh, have the conversation with me to say, that was the other thing, you know, well, you can go to that event and you can, you can have your vodka, lime and sodas or whatever else, but I'm going to need some more steps from you, you know, in the week leading up to it to allow for that. Or you need to go without your homemade pizza on Saturday night and, and make those decisions. So it wasn't you saying, you're going to eat this then. I'm going to prioritize this event over that event for you. It was, well, you tell me, but it's going to be a bit of give and, give and take. Yeah. Um, and the flexibility around all of that was sort of like, wow, you can actually do this. Like this could just actually be your lifestyle. Like for me, it was no longer, this is the diet that I'm going to do for 12 weeks. It's mm -hmm. just, I'm now getting knowledge that I actually can't switch off now because it's just stuck in my head and I actually can't go out to dinner without mentally calculating uh, I could actually just not have cheese on my sandwich I could still have my ice cream tonight but you can't switch those things off once you do it for so long it just becomes ingrained um, and that's the part I wasn't expecting I was expecting I'll do my 12 weeks my 16 weeks whatever it is with flex to give me a little bit of a head start um, and then just try and maintain it without expecting that I'd have any new skills that would actually lead me to any success yeah yeah how do you how do you actually feel about the concept of now that you can't switch that off <laughs> no like oh yeah I've never, i don't think i've eaten a kebab since i started counting macros um <laughs> the same reason i, I know what's in it no where i'm gonna go sometimes i hate it <laughs> like, I, I agree right so sometimes it can be negative but i think a lot of some people try and like really rip on uh, any kind of restriction to your diet in today's society is being this hyper restrictive. It's not good for you. Like what about your mental health? And like those things are super important, but like, yeah. how do you feel about the fact that you have the, at least the opportunity to make an informed choice around? Like if I go to dinner, 
and I, yeah. and I miss out on cheese. Like maybe my pizza's a nine out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10, but my yeah. husband's always a 10 out of 10. So I'm rocking that. Yes. That's how I feel about it. But I don't know. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I feel exactly the same. It, it can be, yeah, it can be a blessing and a curse. It absolutely has set me up for success in terms of if I make a decision, I'm making an informed decision. So I'm making an informed decision that this meal is going to be extra delicious, mm. even if it then means that my results aren't going to be what Lizzie and I expect or want for this week. Yeah. But it's, I'm not going to then wake up tomorrow, like, you know, we were saying before, Liz, about I'm not going to then wake up the next morning and be, ang you know, be like, what the hell? I don't understand anything. Why am I 200 grams heavier on the scale? I did everything right. Well, you didn't do everything right, did yeah. you, Sam? And, it's, and I know that. And so it's this, I know, look, it's that sense of control that, well, you know exactly what you're getting tomorrow or the next day on the scale. Yeah. So just own it. Yeah. But then also the guilt's not there because if I'm making an informed decision that, okay, well, I'm going to have the piece of cake after dinner while we're out or whatever, regardless of I know what the consequences will be and I need to get up and do some more steps or I need to expect a, a less, you know, less result on the scale this week, whatever it is, yeah. I feel as though I'm making that decision and I'm therefore going to own it and enjoy it yeah. and just, okay, have your piece of cake. You decided to have that. So enjoy it and make the most of it. And then don't feel shitty about it for a week. Like yeah, just you have that. And it doesn't make you lose weight, does it? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't change anything. And it also doesn't write off the rest of the week, you know? Right. So there's, there's, there's no point. Um, I, I just think it just, it, it helps your mindset no end because it, it eradicates that guilt because you've made the informed decision and, and you did it within control. Yeah. A great example of that is when you went skiing recently. Where did you go skiing? Melbourne? Uh, just Queenstown. Oh, that's right. It was New Zealand. Yeah. And um, we set you a particular target and you ended up drinking more than we had allocated for. And I did. what I loved about that, that was fine. What I loved about that is you weren't like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I have such little willpower. Why you said, I really enjoyed myself. I don't regret it at all. Like yeah. those drinks meant that I could spend more time with my friends and family and you made that choice and you loved those drinks and that was it. And yeah. that was fine. That was all good. Yeah. It meant that you yeah. knew that weight loss wouldn't have been that large that week. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. And I think that, that that's the big thing. Um, uh, th this idea that you have one meal and so you've blown the week or, and that used to be a really big part of, of my dieting mindset. Like, um, you know, I, I drank on Saturday night, so I won't worry about starting the next diet for another week or, you know, the first of a month is a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. So we'll wait until the next month because I've kind of written this month off. This whole idea that um, uh, you've, you've blown it and, and someone once said to me, you know, you drop your, you drop your, your phone and a little bit of a crack appears in the screen. And so it's the equivalent of like putting it on the ground and like jumping on top of it and being like oh well there's one crack so I may as well just write it off now yeah. it's just ridiculous like you've got one little crack there just get get back on track yeah. um and, and that's I think that the knowledge has actually given me the power to do that you don't write off a week or a day or anything um yeah. because of one decision that you make yeah I love yeah. it I think that's the power behind numbers as well because as you know as a client you have a tracking sheet where you record your end of day macros and yeah the formula tells us the calories for that day. So yeah. if you were to overeat on, like let's say you eat nachos or something and it was an extra 600 calories, you know that for the week, it's going, yeah. the number is going to show a 600 calorie surplus. But yeah. if you were to be like, oh, I screwed up last night, let's go for this dessert and this dessert, you know those yeah. numbers are going to creep. So I think looking at the numbers and having this like objective sort of zoomed out view of what you've done is really helpful. Um, Definitely. Instead of Definitely. the view of good food and bad food, oh, I already had bad food, may as well keep eating bad. What, what the hell is bad food? Yeah. Rat poison? Outside of rat poison, that's not a thing. Well, the, the, yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for us, and like we try and portray this message to a lot of people, uh, and, it's, and it's more difficult for people that have come to us with large amounts of weight to lose, is that once you kind of go over the hill of going from like, like moderately a little bit overweight to like decently overweight to very overweight, and the scale goes up, mm. or in your ability to actually manage your diet yourself becomes far, far, far more difficult because your body, you, yeah. the, what, you, what you've created by gaining more body fat over time is essentially like a messed up feedback system. Mm. So like mm -hmm. you have to teach people the objective stuff, the numbers and all the rest of it so that you can like, like you've done already, like, oh yeah, 600 calories is really not that much for the week to be over. That's cool. Like you understand it. Yeah. And you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to be hungry because I know that I could probably eat this much food, but this is how much food I actually need. And yeah. it makes you, like you keep saying, and it's, it's cool, is the informed approach is just so much easier. Yeah. 
Yeah. On yeah. that note, someone who is 60 kilos and is trying to be 65 kilos, mm. a different ball game than someone who mm. started at, what did you start at before you came? 120, 120 kilos? Yeah. Yeah. At the, at the heaviest. Yeah. And now you're 85. You would have had a much harder time because you've had to lose so much more. You've had to be in a deficit for far longer. The you know, yeah. that system is different. Your hunger hormones would be higher because of how long we've been in a deficit for. Um, but yeah. I love that, that you're sticking it out. But let's talk about these maintenance phases and diet breaks that you've had. If you were yeah. in a weight loss phase before flex, would you ever consider being okay with a small amount of weight gain or weight maintenance during a holiday? No. Uh, it, yeah, no. So my my little stints of dieting would just be like a hard out. We're going for a beach holiday. So I'm just basically going to starve myself or just drink lemon water with cayenne pepper in it for six weeks in the lead up to that. And then I will then be able to reward myself by eating and drinking myself into absolute oblivion for however long we're overseas for. Uh, so just a completely broken way of, um, uh, yeah, of relationship with food. Yeah. So tell me about the journey of that relationship changing. Why do you think that that relationship has changed or how? I, th I honestly think that the biggest thing for me has been um, to just trust in the science behind it. And, and I've said this to you before, Liz, and people can't believe that we're, I'm actually not that fixated on the, the number on the scale. And I've even said to Liz in the past, sometimes I can find that I get a bit fixated. So um, Liz will just sort of say, well, let's have a couple of weeks where we actually don't, you don't weigh in, you know, like it's, um, it's, it's not as, yeah. So just like to, you know, give me a couple of weeks where I don't have to fixate on that. I'm not looking at the number every day, but I just think that um, people can't get over the fact that you can be on, you know, this diet or this lifestyle where you're trying to lose weight, but you're not weighing in every single day and that that's not the whole working. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exa exactly. But for me now, it's that understanding that there's trust in the science. And so what I was saying to you is, you know, I eat this salad or I would starve myself for a day and then I jump on the scale and not get this crazy great result and then feel absolutely shit about it. And it would just blow my mindset out. Whereas now I can literally have my most compliant week and get a 400 gram loss and it would barely phase me when I could be expecting, you know, over a kilo because I just know, well, the science will catch up. You know, I've yeah. made the right choices. It will happen. I could be holding a bit more water. You know, I could be due for my period. There could be so many reasons that I'm not seeing an immediate result. But I know if I stick it out and I keep making the right choices for, you know, yeah. repeatedly, the numbers follow. It happens because it's yeah. science, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not just like calories flying into my mouth while I'm asleep. It's science. <laughs> it's calories in and out. And I get that now. <laughs> So you're not a sleep eater? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I've had a client tell me he was. <laughs> so, yeah, he that's why he was in contest prep three or four weeks out from a bodybuilding show and was like, I think I've figured out why I'm not getting results. And I'm like, no. oh, what is it? He goes, I eat while I sleep. I'm actually going to go to Bunnings. I'm going to buy myself a lock. I'm going to lock myself in my room. I'm like, how's about you just tell yourself the truth? That's a lot <laughs> Straight up. I had a client tell me that she was car sick and so she had to have a cheeseburger. I'm like, I'm not joining the dots here. What do you mean? Well, I... they, they do grilled chicken too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Can you have a chibata? I don't know. Does it have to be a chibata? That, that anti-nauseating cheeseburger medicine. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, <laughs> well, I think Sam, thing, Sam's not lying to herself. No, I think one of the things I'm recognizing too, and what you say here is every time before you've dieted, it seems like you've had a bit of an extrinsic motivator, like, you know, X date. Yeah. And, with the date being a holiday. Yeah. Right? And yeah. what we kind of know with that too, is that most people can do very well for that point in time. Yeah. And, and once that time happens. What do you do? Yep. The bomb exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um, exactly. What was, what was different this time than you think about the, uh, the motivation behind trying to shift body weight? And I think it, I think I think it really probably was um, an exacerbation with myself that I've just tried everything, um, and uh, in talking to my sister, also being a flex um, client, uh, knowing that that I could learn sustainable skills that could just stick with me forever without constantly thinking that I'm on a diet. It's actually just a lifestyle and it's actually just the way that I live my life. Um, and there'll be 
periods where I am um, stricter on myself, just as anyone is, because right now I'm obviously still moving through a, um, a weight loss phase, but then there'll be periods where I'm a bit more relaxed, but still mindfully eating and making informed choices when I'm on holidays, but you never are on a diet or off a diet, if that mm. makes sense. I don't consider myself to now be on a 12 month diet. I feel as though I've just been through a process of learning a whole lot of lessons that stick with me and, and we're moving through a process of weight loss. But I, I have every intention to make informed choices every day for the rest of my life now. You, can't, you don't switch that off, right? Yeah. And I can genuinely say to you that when I was moving through all this Jenny Craig and every other diet known to Australia, um, I genuinely thought that the population of the world fell into two categories, yo-yo dieters and those that could eat whatever they want, whenever they want, because they just had a really good metabolism. Right. I 100% believe that. So yeah. if someone looked like they had the type of body that I wanted and seemed to eat what they want. I that was because they naturally had just a really good metabolism. And I was so jealous of that. And it sucked. And so sad to be me because I didn't have that amazing metabolism. Nothing to do with the fact that they were probably up at 4am every single day, like working their ass off while I was in bed sleeping. <laughs> uh, and that the one meal that I saw them eat that I was so jealous about might've been like their one treat for the entire week, but I just assumed that they ate that every single meal. So yeah. just these, this really uninformed uh, and this woe is me, you know, it's only me that suffers from this, um, uh, you know, mindset that I just needed to break and get the hell out of, to get out of my own friggin' way to do something about it once and for all. God, I love that. Yeah, it's good. Although I do want to say, damn you, Stephen Wren. That's mum and dad giving me these terrible genetics. <laughs> That's right. But oh, what yeah. about Bree, your like a ripped, chiseled sister? <laughs> doesn't have the same genetics. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just I got the I got the bad genes, guys. It's got nothing to do with my choices. Don't look at me. Of course. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, um, okay, so like obviously, like your ability to retain this, you know, like the success rate in weight loss is pretty scary. It's pretty damning, right? Yeah. Below five percent of people. Can yeah, get after like five time. years, yeah. you know, sub five percent success rate. Um, and I think that's one important, like people may think that that's a scary uh, stat to give people that are losing weight because they could throw their hands up and go, fuck it, too hard. Um, but yeah. I think also like similar to the science approach and understanding macros and what's in food, it's like if you come to the party with an understanding of what you're up against, you at least are coming with enough ammunition to maybe try and fight back. Um, yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how like frustrating was it to learn? But then because of the time you spent now to learn all about this, What's the like sort of uh, the opposite end of the spectrum of how much freedom and like enjoyment has that given you back in life? Oh, uh, just, uh, yeah, I, I can't even put it into to words because I don't, I don't have this mindset now where it's um, like I said before, I'm, I'm on the diet this month and I'll be off it again next month because Christmas is a really hard time. So I'll just throw out the whole of December and hope that I don't put on a kilo a week, which was just, it was just the, the way that I would do it. You, I was either living my life or I was in complete restrictive mode and my moods and everything would follow that restrictive mode. It was, you, why would you diet over Christmas? That's ridiculous. Mm. Meanwhile, I went away for three weeks last year and I think we lost three kilos yeah. you know, over Christmas, you know, and, and I had Christmas day and everything else, you know? So, um, my, my enjoyment is I, I don't, I don't feel restricted because as soon as I start to feel that way, I, I just talk to Liz and I say, um, you know, um, scales are getting to me a bit this week, or uh, I've got an event coming up. I, you know, I'd really like to enjoy that a little bit more than I normally necessarily would. Um, or, uh, you know, I'm just really, I'm feeling really hungry this week. What, whatever it is, we, 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 we work around it, but it's not, oh, okay, we'll just switch the diet off this week because you're feeling a bit shitty or you've got an event on and we'll, we'll start again next month, you know? So it's, um, yeah, it, it's not, it's not a magic pill, it's education. And it's actually that transfer of knowledge. So now I have it and I can't forget it. You know, I've got it for life now. That's not to say though, that you haven't pushed through hard times though, because mm. let's say you came to me and said, Liz, I'm feeling really hungry this week. Like, I, I don't know if, you know, I can stick to 1700 cal, like whatever the calorie target is. That yeah. I, obviously I wouldn't say eat whatever you want, as you just mentioned. But I also wouldn't always go to, all right, well, let's just bump your calories up by 500 a day. Sometimes yeah. I ask you to drink a cup of concrete. Um, yeah. 
And I love that you're such a hard worker that you take that on the chin and you do it. And sometimes yeah. maybe we will take a diet break and we'll bump up your calories to maintenance calories. But I think yeah. that maintaining weight for a week is so much better than yeah. fuck it and gaining three kilos. Because yes. sometimes no steps at all is a forward step. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, was, which would have been the absolute... Um, exactly what I would have done before, moved into this enormous calorie deficit because I was drinking shakes and mirror placements instead of eating food. Um, so, oh, wow, I lost some weight, a mag magic pill. Um, and then, oh, my God, I'm starving because I've had like eight days of 800 calories a day. No wonder. Yeah. So I will just eat whatever I want and put it all back on. Yeah. Um, whereas coming to you and, and making those choices to say, you know, some weeks it might be like, well, okay, you are hungry. What are you going to do about it? You can walk more and then I can give you more to eat. Or you're telling me you don't have time to walk more. So stay, stay that little bit hungry. Do you know what I mean? And, and I'd say, okay, well, that choice is mine. Um, and, and I either need to get up earlier or find a way to get in some more steps or some more exercise, move more, whatever it is to give me more food. Or I need to deal with the fact that I need to lose some weight and that's going to hurt a little bit sometimes and yeah. make that decision for myself. Yeah. Um, but you're exactly right. It normally it would have been, um, food as a reward as a reward as comfort for anxiety for boredom for absolutely everything um, and, yeah it's celebration like if something good's happened something bad's happened um and moving away from that and, and feeling as though it's more of um actually i guess understanding yeah that energy in energy out um and yeah that that we can be flexible around that but you've got to be willing to to move for it or be that little bit hungry mm, absolutely I do worry though sometimes when we try and teach because our our um, little what is it, motto yeah diet smart not hard um, yeah when we teach people how to do it the smart way not the hard way some people think oh well it's not going to be hard ever mm. and they do yeah because like, Dean's had people come to him and just say oh yeah cool so you can just teach me how to eat pizza and have everything I want without the sacrifices yeah, um, like, yeah you can have a slice. You can have a slice you can of sacrifice pizza. seven slices. For oh life. yeah, you can have a little pizza and not get your results. So, like, I just want to bring home the point to listeners that although there's an easier way to do things, you still need to work hard sometimes, and you still need yeah. to sacrifice Definitely. sometimes. Well, but it's absolutely. about not sacrificing the things that are unnecessary or stupidly yeah. there without knowing. Um, Say, so, I mean, somebody who's been very successful, and that's like a really cool segue into a question that I was drumming up in my head because I've had one is that. There's so many people try and lose weight and they do so well for so short time, such a short time. Yeah. What are some of the things that you do on a daily basis to increase the likelihood of your success? Uh, so I've spent a lot of time unpacking the like triggers that I've sort of found in the past in terms of actually understanding. And I've spent a lot of time in, in, in talking to Liz and I feel as though she's part counselor, part coach sometimes, but I think that that's so important because being able to be honest with my coach has enabled us to put in place strategies to help me avoid situations, which I find really triggering. Um, and triggering in so much as, you know, those, those looking across and seeing everyone else at the work afternoon tea or the, cake celebration having a piece and then being like well everyone else can do it why can't I mm -hmm. um and talking that through with someone rather than just being uh, wallowing in that um enables you to work it through in your mind to actually understand okay well you need to not a why are you comparing yourself to anyone else you have no idea what they how much they move what they um, their calorie requirements are for maintenance. You don't know if they are maintaining, if they're putting on, if they're losing. You have absolutely no idea what is happening in that person's circumstances. Why are you even looking at them? Yeah. Um, but but actually having someone that you can talk through those things and then actually understanding what my sort of little triggers are. So I've got little tr you know little tricks that I do now that Liz and I have come up with that anytime where I've got a, one of the um, celebrations at work, like an afternoon tea where there's just going to be nothing but cakes and sweets everywhere. I'll have make myself like a really sweet tea with um, like too many equal tablets. And so I almost feel like sugared out by the time I get there. And so I'm happy to sort of just like maybe have like a little thing, but I'm not going there like needing my like three o'clock sugar rush. I've sort of felt yeah. as though I've had something before. So it's just understand like taking the time to actually sit back and say, 
Um, the next week I've got a couple of um, workshops. So there's going to be catered lunches where I'm not completely in control. Um, I know that I make bad choices at those sorts of things because I look at the other, what other people are eating. I choose, you know, sandwiches with heaps of mayo and cheese and that just because they're there. Just actually taking the time to understand what's in front of you and what are the things that have generally led to you making core decisions and then having foresight and a plan around it. Mm. But I've always done it by myself. I've always done it like an online program or uh, it's never been this sort of one-on-one coaching experience where it's actually, okay, what does the next week look like for you? What are the challenges going to be? Um, and, and what can we do to get you through and still get a good, a positive result at the, at the outset? Yeah. Mm. I'd love that you've always been proactive with that because still to this day, I have clients who are reactive where I ask them, they're like, oh no, nothing. My, my week is uneventful. And then at the, yeah. the next check-in seven days later, they're like, oh, so all of this stuff happened. So I really yeah. screwed up there. So I think there's a time and place to be reactive, but most of the time we want to be on the front foot. We want to be proactive and Mm. thinking it out like you do. So I um, got to credit you for all of your success there, for just being a little misorganized. Formation too, right? Yeah. It's like if you you go and then be reactive, you haven't actually achieved any habit change whatsoever. That's true. No. You go into it and then you come out of that successful, like cool, like pat on the back little bit of a tick towards like becoming better at that habit. If you make a mistake, that's cool. At least try, try again next time. So like, yeah. oh, that's, that's a big one. I think that proactive approach is probably massive. Mm, yeah. Yeah, mm. definitely. Um, can I just point out how incredibly hot and sauna like it is in this office right now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I was a man. I didn't have boobs and it was appropriate for me to take my shirt off. because It is, <laughs> it is, it is sweltering. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Oh, Queensland song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. <laughs> Is there any other things you do on a daily basis Sam, that you think would help people that are listening that may have been or are in your situation? Um, I, I, I wish that I had found flex sooner because I don't feel as though it is that sort of, um, uh, I'm always looking for the right time to start um, a, a new diet or a new crash course in exercise or whatever it is that I was going to be taking up that month. Um, that there is no time like the present. I wish I just pulled the trigger sooner because there are always going to be events that are coming up. There's always going to be holidays. There is always going to be Christmas around the corner. Just get started and work out life around it. But I feel as though I made a decision to um, prioritize myself finally um, after and I should have done it sooner. It was only me making excuses that, you know, kids or something else came first, but actually, <coughs> excuse me, actually saying that, no, you know, I'm going to do this for myself and I'm going to commit to it. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm so glad that I did when I did. And if anything, I wish I'd done it sooner. And so if, if someone is thinking about it, just at, at least try it and see if it's for you. Just see how much you can learn. There's Thanks nothing for the plug, spe- Sam. Yeah, there's nothing special about Mondays. <laughs> there is nothing special about Mondays. I feel like I'm going to slip you a 20 for that little plug. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> that's funny. Um, and would there be any sort of like take-home points that you want listeners who feel like Sam 12 months ago to take home when you were feeling out of control and, you know, like nothing was working? Is there sort of any anything that you would give them peace of mind or something like that? I think the peace of mind piece comes from understanding that yeah, look, all of those other diets will work. At the end of the day, anything that gets you into a calorie deficit will work. You take out bread and don't replace it with anything else. It's not because your body reacts badly to bread necessarily, or it's making you fat. It's because you haven't replaced those 200 calories a day with something and you're now in a 200 calorie deficit. Like they will all work, but they don't teach you anything. The different, like I would just say, value yourself your own knowledge and actually getting all of the information for yourself so you can make the decisions for yourself you're not reliant on anyone else um uh and do it once you know don't don't go from diet to diet to diet looking for the magic pill or the magic solution learn it once properly learn it um and then take it with you forever because you can't forget it yeah Mm. i love that um i'd like to point out that usually we don't our life cycle for clients we like to be shorter than 12 months but Sam has yeah, a yeah. Really larger amount of weight to lose than most of the clients, <laughs> which is why she's hung on for longer. So, um, yeah, usually not a 12 months thing. 
but I hope to sign you up for a lifetime membership because I never want thank to know you so much. Check in with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for not doing that on my very first uh, consultation. <laughs> thank you for believing in me more than that. Should we be changing the terms and conditions? I contract? can't believe that. I didn't know that. That's actually like, you know, there's some moments where you hear people say things, you're like, holy shit. That was one of those. It is on their oh, orientation God. paperwork, man. It is on their orientation sign up. Well, you're going to be with us for life. So that's how much we believe. It's the you. equivalent of the gym that signs up the person with like, osteoarthritis in their back that can't move. Yeah, like, yeah. Or signing up a paraplegic that in a gym that doesn't have uh, elevated, no, elevated facilities. facilities. Like, yeah. You, yeah. You'll, never, you'll never do well here, but I'm happy to take your money for 12 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is yeah. so cool. Man. Now, Sam, we're gonna move into some segments. Yeah, yeah cool. Being uh, something worth sharing. Usually yeah. because we have osteopaths on or strength and conditioning coaches, it would be relevant to training, nutrition, something like that. Um, yeah. But yours can be whatever. Is there something you've read, listened to, or watched that you think is worth sharing? Um, no, can, I, can I recommend a product? Sure. Pepsi sure. Max Creaming Soda. <laughs> Are we no. Into that? no, we won't. I allow. love it. Really? Yes. Oh, man, raspberry so much better. Now, I... I'm not, so I'm not talking to you, Coke drinker. Okay. This is between <laughs> Pepsi Max people. You mean the losers? <laughs> oh, I just love it. It's yeah, an right. inferior it's, product to coat. Right. Yeah, I'm really into that. And also, no, but the um the Coke Zero Energy one that they have at the moment as well. I am definitely into that. Yeah, I haven't tried mm. that one. Mountain Dew sugar free energy is also out now in Australia. Oh yeah. very good to know. Very Pepsi Max ginger, and that was nice. That was delicious. We had oh. a water bottle to bring back to our friend, but then I think we only had carry-on luggage and forgetting that we couldn't bring more than hundred mils of liquid or something. Mm. Uh. So they took it from us. I was yeah. devastated. And then the other interesting one, in Japan, we tried, not tried, we got, it was called uh, Coke Plus. And it was oh. basically Coke Zero Plus a fiber. marine fiber that attaches to fats, right? But they only put in the tiniest amount. But <laughs> when you have this marine fiber with a high fatty meal, you basically just poop out the fat because it can't, it, it encapsulates it. So but there it was, was a weight loss Coke It's obviously product. dose dependent for it to yeah. be, um, like to work. <laughs> It'll hold on to one gram. So good, guys. Okay, um, I will allow your suggestion only because we didn't put limitations on you, but I would like it to be known for the record that I do not support your recommendation. Oh. No, I understand. Pepsi cream I understand. in the bin. Pepsi Max is amazing. That's funny. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so now we've got uh, two questions for you that we've also asked our other guests on the podcast. Yes. If there was a mystery that you could solve, it could be anything at all, something from your past, an economic mystery, a scientific mystery, what would it be? A mystery? Hmm. Oh. Is my okay. heart really dead? <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. It would definitely, it would definitely be true crime related. Okay. It would probably, it's probably more so I follow a lot of true crime. It's probably the mystery to me in terms of why people do what they do. So Chris Watts, I don't know if you guys have followed his story, the family annihilator in the U S at the moment. Um, so he's been convicted of murdering his pregnant wife uh, mm -hmm. and his two children. The mystery to me is what happens to these people? Why? Like he's like this normal guy. He had a mistress, but that's not enough. Like you don't kill your, your pregnant wife and children. That's mm. fucked up. I'm, yeah. I'm a massive crime fan and that's good. And now I'm going to have to Google So, it. Sam, as somebody with a degree yeah. in psychology, do you have any theories? I, look, I don't have a degree in psychology. I've got a degree and uh, some majors in psychology. Oh, right, right. I just, I just think that this like whole like one in a hundred people are psychopaths. I just think that that's got to be spot on. And there are just people all around that are sort of just living with these psychopathic tendencies that they're keeping just below the surface. Mm. And then I look at like how many people, like an organization that I work for hires and there must be like a thousand of them walking mm. around. Yeah. Well, That's see, scary. I am so intrigued with psychopaths. I read a book recently called what? Yes. The, the Power of Psychopaths. Yeah, and you've also done like How to Know You've Dated a Psychopath. Oh, I wrong. did date a psychopath, which is why I read the book How to Know If You've Dated a Psychopath. No, I think it was called like Living Life After Dating a Psychopath yeah, or something. something like but anyways, yeah. This hot pink book called, we'll put it in the show notes anyways, it intrigues me so much because it shows that like 
the best lawyers and doctors and surgeons and pilots are psychopaths. CEOs. Yeah, yep. because they can make these decisions unemotionally and they're just the yep. best decisions. But it's so difficult Definitely. for empathetic people to make these decisions because their yep. ethics and their feelings come into play and it just muddies the water. Mm. Yeah. And because we're on the something worth sharing, there's actually a show called Explained on Netflix. And yep. the one on there, I believe, is uh, I think it's the moral one that they talk about. And it right. goes into the, the very, very like well known psychopath. Are you talking about question. the mind explained? The mind explained, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a very there's a very typical question of whether or not you would push somebody in front of a train. And they do that one on there. So for anybody's interested it's in It's called the, the whole, trolley dilemma. Yeah. Um if anyone's interested in like knowing more about that stuff for like a very quick entry level like look at it, that's a cool episode. It's like eighteen minutes. So, so yeah, it's awesome. Not it's, the it's under the mind it. no, it's under the mind explained or it's under just explained, I can't remember. Uh, and I believe the question they're trying to explain, not, not the question, the thing they're trying to explain is moral choices. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now we're moving on to a would you rather question. No, no. Yeah. Aren't we? We're going to do question two. Oh, well. sorry. You go. Question Sam, two. if go. you were arrested with no explanation, what do you think your family and friends would believe you got arrested for? Uh something to do with my car they just think that i'd done something stupid i'm just not a great driver <laughs> isn't that what alan said as well yeah he's, he's, and then we bagged him up for being asian yeah <laughs> i don't even have that as an excuse i'm like a stereotypical woman driver that's all i could put it down to but i'm just shit and i don't even claim to be good <laughs> no but would you would you be arrested because you were blind and you ran over a child or would you be arrested because you road rage or um, no, it, no, it wouldn't be road rage. It'd be, yeah, it'd be like leaving my car in the middle of some place where it is like blocking people being able to do their job <laughs> and then I've like refused to move it or just not been available to move it or something and I've just gotten myself into a real pickle. I just really like vacant minded. It would be something stupid like that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never get in the car with Sam just in case. <laughs> you two should never get in the car. Hey, I actually think I'm a good driver. So no, but when it comes to leaving your car in a place in which it should oh, be, I lose my car in every shopping centre I go. To. Yeah, noted. She yeah. doesn't even know which way she came out of the public toilet in the shopping centre. Yeah, I always She'll go, go to in, exactly into the toilet left, and then she comes out and she goes right, and then I don't yeah. see it for a day. Look, some of us were just not born with internal compasses, Dean. Yeah. It's my genetics. <laughs> I'm sure it's a skill I could learn as well, but I, I, have, I haven't learned it. Um, all right. Now the would you rather question. Yeah. Would you rather have a dick shape shaved into your head? Yeah. Or have no eyebrows? Oh. Is like my whole head shaved or is it like on one side? Just a dick shape shaved into the top of your head. So you can't like cover it with a fringe. or It's like there. It'll grow back. So it's like a dick cow. Yeah, like, well, no, it's shaped, so, like, it'll grow back eventually, and so oh, okay. will your brows, but for a moment in time, you have this perfect cock and balls. Yeah, yeah. Is it, like, winter? Can I wear beanies? Mm -hmm. You've got to have you gotta that shit. You've got to rock it out with your cock out. Rock out with your <laughs> cock out. <laughs> I, I actually would have to, I would think I would have to cock out. I think I'd have to go eyebrows. God, I'd be so ugly. <laughs> and as part of this, as part of this, can you, like, um in the show notes or something. Can you just see what I'd look like and let's erase my eyebrows? <laughs> you can do that. You totally can. I wear contact lenses because I'm blind as a bat, but sometimes I wear glasses when it's a no contact today. And I wear my glasses a little further down my nose because when I wear them up perfectly, it covers the, the frame covers. My oh face, yeah. And I look like I have none <laughs> and it's yeah. horrible. So I, I'm going dick. Yeah. The question wasn't asked to me. My mom doesn't have breasts. It's true. Why? She can I do a... Can I do a would you rather for you guys just quickly? I'd yeah. love you to. <laughs> would you rather, look how into it Dean is. Would you rather fight off three horse sized ducks <laughs> or 100 duck sized horses? I need to think about that. Three horse sized ducks. Okay. My sister does these all the time. I'm going to fight off the three horse sized ducks. Why? Man, they are big ducks. They're big ducks, but man, that'd be fun. Their beaks would like. Yeah, really imagine a hundred of them. Oh, they hundred. They are so aggressive. 100 You're wrong. A <laughs> hundred could get no. I'll just karate chop necks. 
What's the goose? But that big, so big, so big. No, they goose it for a moment. They have gooseneck, and then as that one. Oh, happens, they're... They're gonna... See, will, will the little um, horse, no, duck sized horses, can they bite me? Yeah, they'll nip at your feet. Yeah. Ooh. That's a lot. That's a hundred is a lot. You know what? I feel like a hundred. Think about it. A hundred duck sized, no, a hundred duck sized horses would almost be like putting your feet in one of those baths of fish in Thailand. Yeah. You come out with really smooth feet. Only because I don't think I could fight off a hundred of anything. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go for three, even though I think they could probably do more damage. They're big duck. Yeah, no, they'll they'll kill you. Yeah. You both got it wrong. Either way, I don't know. We're fucked. So many good wood you're (laughs) Um, (laughs) So many good ones. And finally, a new segment that we only started in the last podcast before you. Embarrassing gym story. Go. Oh. I just, I get really embarrassed by the um, amount of sweat I leave behind on any machine. I yeah. always feel like, is that an inhumane amount of sweat? Are people <laughs> looking at me thinking that woman's sweating too much? There's something wrong with her? Yeah. I think no one has time to think of these things. I think of this a lot. And then I look at other people's sweat marks and I'm like, well, that wasn't so big. Like, why can't I leave a sweat mark like that? That's actually quite a dainty sweat mark. Like, you can only just see that person's bum. Like, mine's like, that's not that big. Yeah, listen, you sweat. Dom, Dom, our friend is uh, Dom. Someone's not a sweater. He could, he could train in one of these shirts and have no sweat marks. Yeah, yeah, that's not me. Mm. <laughs> okay, I accept. So, for those of you listening who have embarrassing gym moments, you can hop onto the Flex Success podcast page and submit your embarrassing gym moments. Mm. Please leave your name because I want to name and shape. <laughs> I'm going to use a fake name. That's also fine. But we, we would love your embarrassing stories. We've all got some. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know anyone that doesn't have an embarrassing gym story. I actually don't know if I would have one off the top of my head. Yeah, it take me a while. No. No, I'm serious. You'd have one for sure. Surely you've at least waved at someone and then they've not seen you and you felt like a loser. Not off the top of my head. No. Oh. Well, he's lying. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> No, I just have a really bad recall of times that I've buried away. <laughs> Maybe it was so bad. I'm just remember. so good at burying, burying my emotions. <laughs> Maybe I'm a sucker. Maybe you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Sam, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your experiences with everyone. Pleasure. Thank you for having me, guys. I do hope that people listening that uh, can relate to Sam's story feel comforted at the fact that someone's been there and done that and and found a way out because there definitely is a way out and you're definitely not alone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for anybody listening, we'll put in the show notes this week. No doubt we will put in there again a link to Life After Dieting book. It's going to actually help out a lot of people for that phase where they can't deal and get uh, deal with the problems of life after dieting, of course, hence the name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And if anybody's even interested in, I suppose, coaching too and wants to just jump on a consultation with us to see what we're all about, then we'll chuck that in the show notes too. Yeah, because Sam knows that once she gets to her goal weight, we're pretty close, uh, that she eventually will not be tracking macros anymore. She'll have a more flexible approach to nutrition. um, And we'll call that life after dieting, where she'll move fully into a phase of informed eating, just using the skills that she's learnt um, without her food diary. What a dream. Exciting. Until next time. Thanks, listeners. See ya. Bye. Bye.